All right, guys, so in this video, I'm going to be going over the biggest losers of this round of conference realignment as things seem to be quieting down a little bit. We'll have to see what happens in the coming weeks, but we do have the season starting with week zero kicking off next Saturday, I want to say. Not this Saturday, next Saturday, so a week and a half. And I just wanted to go through five or six teams that I think were the biggest losers during this summer realignment period, starting with, I would say, 1A, 1B, 1 and 2, whatever you want to call it. The biggest losers have to be Oregon State and Washington State. Maybe you could make an argument that Oregon State should actually be the number one biggest loser because they got a stadium renovation with the idea that obviously, you know, the Pac-12 would get a very nice 50 or $60 million per year TV deal with USC still in the conference. That ends up not happening, and now they owe around $2 million per year in terms of paying for that renovation, and possibly they're going to be in the Mountain West that has only a TV deal of like 7 or $8 million. So really bad situation for both Oregon State and Washington State. You could say, well, what if they join the Big 12, but I don't think the Big 12 wants them. Are they possibly headed for the Mountain West? Could they somehow stick it out with both Stanford and Cal and try and create a a new Pac-12, which probably would be the Pac-16 unless they're able to get some American teams? There's just no real good scenario when you look at Oregon State and Washington State right now. Both of these teams probably had the mindset in 2019, 2020, they were in for a major payday when the new TV deal was negotiated and it went completely belly up directly in the opposite direction. You do have to feel bad for them and their options are not good and they might have to drop down to the group of five. So Oregon State and Washington State, by far the two biggest losers. I would say right now, Oregon State is probably the number one biggest loser because of their renovation happening with the thought that they would get a brand new TV deal. It would be a big payday. They would be fine in a conference with USC, with Oregon, with Washington, and none of that ends up happening. So Oregon State, the biggest loser. And the other thing is, it's such a shame. Oregon State ranked like 18th in the AP preseason poll. They've got the transfer QB, DJ Uilangile. And, you know, this is going to be a big year for them, but they're going into it with this really dark cloud over their head. And it's also such a shame for the Pac-12. The Pac-12 with the returning quarterbacks is going to be really good this year. And by the way, that's why I think USC might lose two or three games. A lot of people aren't talking about USC. You know, they're preseason number six. They've got the Heisman Trophy winner. But I don't know. I don't think USC has improved that defense enough. But that's another story for another day. Either way, Oregon State... And Washington State, the number one and the number two biggest losers. I mean, I guess that could change if the Big 12 throws them the bo- a bone and invites them in and they're able to get into a Power Four conference. Maybe the ACC does something with, with a West Wing if they end up losing multiple teams next summer. But right now, Oregon State, Washington State, they've got to be the two biggest losers. And then the number three biggest loser for me, it is California. There is a lot of unknown right now with Cal. Their basketball team, their football team have not been good at all recently. You know, they did have Jared Goff. They had Aaron Rodgers a while ago. But at this point, I I don't really know. Cal is trying to cling with Stanford. I'll give them that. They do have academics. That's why I'm putting them below Oregon State and Washington State. They're not in the worst position, but I do think it is... A situation where, worst case scenario, they would join the Mountain West with Oregon State and Washington State. I do not believe they could go on to be an independent and sustain that, unlike Stanford. So California, best case scenario, they probably join the ACC. They've already told the Big 12 no, just like Stanford. So I don't think they're joining the Big 12. Maybe they'll get desperate enough to want to join it. But at least you can say they have the academics on their side and they've kind of been lumped with the ACC as opposed to Washington State and Oregon State. There's really no rumors about them involving any Power Four conferences right now. So I do think it's not nearly as bad for Cal, but there's just so much unknown with Cal. I don't see a direct path forward 
unless they're able to somehow facilitate a move to the ACC if other teams leave the ACC and the conference gets desperate next summer, I could see them possibly looking at a team like Cal in that scenario. The number four biggest loser, it is going to be lower tier ACC schools. Think of teams like Boston College. Think of teams like possibly Syracuse. These are teams that in the worst case scenario, because if you look at college football right now, I would say the ACC, the idea that they were going to add Cal and Stanford, that was a panic move, right? Because they see it's a power four. They see all the other three conferences adding teams, getting better, getting really good TV deals. They realize they have a bad TV deal, but they're also like, look, if we want to stay together as a conference, we need to also add teams. So they go to Stanford and Cal. It seems like they're getting a little bit desperate and it could have a really big domino effect on those lower ACC schools to where does Boston College become the new Washington State? Like the ACC, let's say it gets blown up. You've got most of the teams being divvied up between the Big Ten, between the SEC and the Big 12. Could that possibly leave a few teams out in the cold? You know, Boston College, I would be wary about that if the grant of rights gets ripped up, if they can get enough members together. Those bottom tier ACC teams could be next summer the new Oregon State, the new Washington State where they don't have a dance partner, nobody really wants them, they don't make enough money to justify the Big Ten taking them, the Big 12 taking them, and obviously the SEC taking them. So I would be a little bit wary if I was a lower tier ACC school to where if that grant of rights is not really all that ironclad, there's there's some problems. There's a little bit of panic, you know, if you are a Boston College or another lower tier school. I think teams like, you know, North Carolina's fine, NC State probably is fine, Virginia's fine, or at least I've heard Virginia's probably going to go to the Big Ten or the SEC because of their academics and their basketball. But there are lower tier teams that would have to worry in the event that the ACC does go up in smoke. The fifth biggest loser, it has to be San Diego State. Honestly, you could argue San Diego State should be number one because they left the conference, nobody wanted them, and then they had to run back to their own conference and face a $17 million fee that they're not going to be paying. But still, San Diego State leaves the Mountain West. They think, we're going to the Big 12 or the Pac-12 and neither of it, none of it works out, and now they're forced back into the Mountain West. I still think St- San Diego State will probably be in the Big 12 next summer. So that's why, you know, they're not number one or number two in terms of biggest losers. But I don't know, man. To, the idea of leaving a conference turns out nobody wants you, and then having to run back, that's just not a good look for your program overall. San Diego State does have the new stadium. They are pretty attractive. They've got the the market, the nice TV market. So I do think they should be okay. But they're number five on my list. And then number six, it is Stanford. So the reason Stanford is not lumped in with Cal, Oregon State, and Washington State is because Stanford has a lot more options. They have a lot more money. Worst case scenario, Stanford could you know be an independent and be completely fine because of the amount of money that they do have. But still, if you are Stanford, it's it's got to be a gut punch to be as prestigious of an institution as you are and you're left out in the cold by the Big Ten. I'm guessing they thought if Oregon and Washington were joining the Big Ten, they would also go as well. I still think Stanford can get into the Big Ten, but people were making this argument, and it is correct, even if the Big Ten takes Stanford, there's just no way, you know, let's say Stanford only takes 60 or 70% the first four or five years, by the time Stanford is a full-time member, there's no way they're going to be worth making 70 or 80 or 90 million per year based on their current trajectory with their football program and their basketball program. It's the same thing that happened to Rutgers. It's like you take in Rutgers 
and they're not making nearly as much, but eventually they will be a full-time member. And now that they are, it kind of looks ridiculous that Rutgers is making the amount of money that they're making. So there's a lot of different things at play right now when it comes to what's st- going to be happening to Stanford. I do think Stanford is looking at this, and in terms of football, specifically I'm talking about football, Stanford is saying it's either the ACC, which the ACC just doesn't make any sense because of the travel, but it's either the ACC or the Big Ten, and if it's neither of those, we will just go independent in football, and we will join another conference in other sports, maybe the Mountain West, maybe the West Coast, you know, whatever it ends up being while we keep our independence. So I I think Stanford right now, in terms of the big four or the final four Pac-12 schools, they're in the best spot because they have the money and and they can say, we have an option. We can just be independents if worse comes to worse as opposed to Oregon State, Washington State, and Cal probably not having those options. But I have also heard it's speculated that maybe, you know, California might also be an independent. I don't know. It just seems like Stanford could do it a lot easier, and that's why they are number six on my biggest loser list. Because still, that's got, it's got to be a gut punch, you know? You're left out in the cold by the Big Ten. You're one of the last four remaining Pac-4 schools. You don't have a conference next year. It's not a good situation, no matter how you slice it. Even if Stanford is confident they're going to get into the Big Ten at some point, But guys, those are my biggest losers when it comes to conference realignment here, the last realignment. Number one and two, I'll just repeat this, Oregon State and Washington State, they've got to be number one and number two because they might have to go down to group of five. Uh, Cal is number three. There's a lot of uncertainty with them. Kind of a Hail Mary attempt to get in the ACC. We'll see what happens there. The number four biggest loser is the lower tier ACC schools. That is just a ripple effect based off of what's happening right now in the ACC, possibly having their horrible grant of rights deal get ripped up by eight teams in that conference. The bottom two or three teams could be at a spot where nobody wants them because they don't bring in enough money for schools and they don't have good enough academics. It could get really ugly for those programs. Number five is San Diego State for trying to leave a conference. Nobody wants them, and they're forced to rejoin the Mountain West. But I do still think that San Diego State at some point should get into a major conference. And then the number six biggest loser is Stanford, although they might just be an independent and wait to join the Big Ten. They do have several options. Either way, guys, that is going to do it for this video. Make sure you're following me on X. Link to that's always in the description.